Hmm, world's most intense launch coaster. Okay, I'll bite. Let's see what's going on with this ride. Let's see, fastest acceleration of 111 miles an hour in 1.56 seconds. Damn, what else we got? A uh, second tallest vertical loop. Okay, not the tallest, but still very impressive. All right, anything else? Uh, oh, a warning. Caution, this roller coaster may break your spinal cord. Okay, maybe not this ride. I wonder if there's anything safer I can go on. Hello everyone, welcome to Great American Coasters, the channel that consistently tells you roller coasters are safe, yet also clouds your judgment by making some questionable video topics. Whether I'm discussing the satirical design of the euthanasia coaster, a hypothetical ride that is meant to kill you, or focusing in on the unfortunate event of the Top Thrill Dragster incident. And I have to say, after making these two videos, I kind of feel like a jackass for saying that some of your fears of roller coasters are irrational. And yeah, I still may not agree with you because roller coasters are one of the safest experiences you can ever have, despite what you may think, but I can definitely see where you're coming from. Plus, it doesn't help that there's been a lot more accidents recently and all the news stations are having a field day with it. I mean, look at these headlines, they're clearly clickbait. I mean, I'm also kind of clickbait, but at least to try to provide some reasoning or interpretation on anything I'm talking about. But anyway, let's get to the topic of the video already. Going all the way over to Japan, we got Dodadampa at Fuji Q Highland. And according to the news, this roller coaster is so intense that it'll break your spine. Yes, that's what we're talking about today. A well-known roller coaster that's been in operation for 20 years can just now start breaking people's spines. Yeah, if you can't tell, I don't know what to believe about this. Is the media blowing this out of proportion, or is there something going on with Dodadampa? Well, let's try to find out. For those of you who aren't aware, Dodadampa is an accelerating launch coaster in Japan that is known for reaching a speed of 111 miles an hour in a short time frame of only 1.56 seconds. People have said this coaster feels like a bullet coming out of a gun. You are whipped to the back of your seat and propelled forward down that launch track while gasping for air trying to comprehend what just happened. And recently, the ride's been coming under scrutiny because of a few incidents. Yes, a few. It wasn't just one particular incident. According to Fuji Q, there's been four consecutive cases from December of last year to August of this year where people have reportedly suffered injuries. What kind of injuries exactly? Well, according to, unfortunately, the news, the four victims, they suffered from cervical spine fractures and thoracic spine fractures. What are these exactly? Well, a cervical fracture is basically injury to the neck region, while a thoracic spine fracture is injury to more the general back area and lumbar sections. And what typically causes these injuries are from the result of high impact trauma, which is basically a fancy way of saying intense force to the spine. How you typically get this injury is usually from a car crash. So how did these people break part of their spines from Dota Dampa? Well, to figure that out, we first have to see which part of the ride these guests suffered from high energy trauma. And I can think of no other section than the accelerating launch because Come on, you think they got these injuries from the drawn out turn or the gentle vertical loop? Nah, this happened during that forceful launch. But how these injuries happen is a difficult question I have to prove. Sure, this launch may be intimidating, but it's nothing that people can't handle. Again, this coaster's been operating for 20 years, two decades. And just now we're hearing that people are getting injured. So there are two possible scenarios. One, Fuji Q Highland, they've been conducting a massive cover up for this coaster for the last 20 years, hiding any possible injury. Or there's something else happening during the launch that's causing people to break their spines now. And I think I know what it is, but just hear me out because it sounds stupid at first. I believe this all stems from the employees not stapling the guest. Again, I know it sounds stupid, but just hear me out. When you're in the launch tunnel and about to accelerate to over 100 miles an hour in a short amount of time, your body is naturally going to be thrusted to the back of the seat. So let's say you're stapled with the bulky restraint and have no room to move. On the launch, your body isn't going to be thrown to the back of the seat because you're already pressing against it. Compare that to if you had a lot more room between you and the seat. So on the launch, you're going to be flinged against the seat back and feel that force shimmer through your body. Now you're probably thinking, this is ridiculous, how can you possibly break your spine just because you had a little too much space? 
Well, let's go to my good old friend, Gravitational Force. Now, Dota Dampa, you're not going to experience the typical G-Force that you usually experience, like positive and negative Gs. No, on the launch, you're going to experience something called Horizontal Forces. These forces are front to back rather than up and down. So it's not the same scenario as the blood's going to be rushing away from your brain or anything. No, this kind of force is where you feel pressure on your back and chest. How much force? Well, in Dota Dampa, you will feel about 4.3 Gs. Now, this obviously isn't the highest amount you can feel on a roller coaster. There are some rides where you can experience over 5 Gs, but still, these numbers are nowhere near lethal. But the difference on Dota Dampa is the duration you have to experience 4.3 Gs. You're exposed to this amount of force like that. Compare this to something like uh, I-305, where you're exposed to 5 Gs for 7 seconds. Sure, that may pour all the blood down to your feet, but you're gradually building up force and losing force instead of immediately being exposed to 4.3 Gs all at once. If you still don't understand, here's an analogy that can help explain everything. Like, let's say you have a 45 pound weight and someone laying on the ground. Now, if you just lightly press the weight down on their chest and let go, they're gonna be fine. It might be a little uncomfortable, but they will have no injuries. But now, let's take the same 45 pound weight and just drop it on their chest. Just immediately expose them to all 45 pounds. What's gonna happen? Well, they're probably gonna break some ribs, begin to bruise, probably puncture a lung. You get the point, they're gonna be in pain. And that's really what I'm trying to say about Dota Dampa. Since you're feeling all this immediate force pressing against you, it could cause injury. Fortunately though, if you're completely against the seat back, you're moving with the train. That way you won't feel any sudden collision. But if you're not against the seat back, the train's gonna end up hitting you abruptly and then potentially cause injury. That is what I think happened to these victims. But how come we're only seeing these people come forward between the months of December and August? Well, I think it resorts back to the source of all our problems, COVID. Japan, they have been pretty strict on theme parks. In fact, when they first reopened, they said that you were not allowed to scream on the roller coasters. So if they're strict about that, then who's to say they're not strict to the employees saying, don't touch the restraint. Maybe have the guests show that it's secure by having them try to push it up. Sounds far-fetched? Well, no, because I actually saw some employees doing this at parks when they first reopened after COVID. So, is that it? Case closed? That's why people kept breaking their spines, because they didn't staple themselves? Well, here's the thing. There's a few holes to my theory, per se. For one, if this was the case, we would have seen a lot more victims than just four, because chances are there would be a lot more people that weren't stapled if they were doing it themselves. And another thing, this could just be a case of a few reckless people that maybe just didn't have their head back, because again, injuries consisted of a cervical fracture, so so if someone had their head forward, they would have gotten whiplash. But either way, this is just what I think happened on Dota Dampa. Am I wrong? Am I right? I don't know. We won't have any information on what happened until the Japanese government comes forward because they are taking on the investigation. But until then, this is my theory. And let me say, if I am right about this, prepare for there to be a lot more padding on the restraint. And those things are already bulky as hell, so making them bigger would be a nightmare to say the least. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Just click my logo right there. And as always, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next week.